What is going on, everybody? Hope everybody's doing good. It has been a while. Actually, it's been hardly ever that I do uh, live streams to YouTube, so we're going to see how this works out. I'm hoping it all goes good. Uh, next premium member meeting, I want to let you guys know we do have a, uh, a meeting about the NASTIF stuff and aftermarket tools. I am not an expert on it, but I do have a lot of information. The first time I heard about this stuff coming our way was back in uh, at Super Saturday 2023. Is the first time I heard it. Uh, uh, NASTIF was there. They had a presentation on it, and it was interesting stuff. So we're going to be going over that at the next premium meeting. That is going to be tomorrow, the 21st of March 2024. Uh, the reason I'm here is I wanted to share a tech tip with you all, uh, and we're going to see what happens with uh, how the views come in for watching it, but this was uh, having to do with Ford IDS programming. Uh, what I mean here is we're talking about uh, using Ford IDS to do a PCM update. Pretty simple stuff. Uh, not too hard here. In this instance, we're talking about a 2019 Lincoln Nautilus. This is a crankcase sensor update. Uh, guys, this was on the, uh, what you call it, this was on... Uh, the 14th of uh, uh, March 2024, and then I was back on the 18th of March 2024. So what does that mean? That means we have ourselves a comeback, and uh, a comeback is uh, actually a callback in the mobile business, right? That's what we call that there. So anyhow, I am using IDS version 130.04. At my uh, uh, best knowledge, that is the latest update for IDS for Ford at this time. So that being said, we're going to go ahead here and uh, take a look at this TSB update. Uh, this uh, TSB update is uh, for the crankcase sensor pressure sensor delete. That is what this is all about. So we're going to remove the crankcase pressure sensor tubing that goes to the uh, throttle body tube and also to the top of the valve cover, I believe. We take that out. We update the PCM. This should be something that is pretty easy to do shouldn't be hard whatsoever for us to take care of this so going into this we the first trip out we did this TSB update you have an option via Ford uh, IDS very simple here has the crankcase pressure sensor been replaced with a sensorless uh, tube assembly yes it has we go ahead and click this and you'll see here we do get the current level of the vehicle software ends in a CXC and the latest or the new version ends in a CXH. Now I gotta be honest with you, I didn't pay a lot of attention to this at the time, but I figured, hey, Ford knows what they're doing. We'll go ahead and uh, click this button and do it. So that being said, we go ahead here and click on this button and do the update. No problem, we're all done. I think I'm all good here. I think I'm all set. We clear the codes. I started the vehicle. My standard operating procedure or SOP for me is usually to go ahead and start a vehicle. I start it once or twice, a couple key cycles. If it's an old car, not push button start. I usually go ahead and crank it, start it. Hey, it runs, turn it off, start it up again. Usually if I have a hard code, uh, I'll get a, uh, a hard problem, should I say. I'll get a check engine light or just a DTC to set right away. I didn't have any codes, but I only started this vehicle like maybe for 20 or 30 seconds at most. I get a call back. Uh, well, I think I'm out of here. I get a call back on the 18th, and the shop is saying, hey, guys, this is not uh, working out right. We've got a code for a loss of communication with the crankcase pressure sensor. It's a U060 Echo. I'm like, well, it's got to be something else going on here. I can't explain that for sure. You know, I programmed it right. You know, I'm telling the shop I programmed it according to what Ford told me to do. Unfortunately, we're setting a light in a code. So I gotta go ahead and get back to this shop. I head back there, I tell them I'll come back. If it's my problem, I'll fix it for free, of course. And if I can help you out, you know, we'll figure out what's going on. So I go back on site to the shop. Excuse me one second. I get <clears throat> I get back on site to the shop and we are setting a U060 Echo. That is the loss of communication with that crankcase pressure sensor so there's no doubt we actually have the problem that they are talking about and that's a fact so I go ahead here and I figure out let me go ahead and try to reprogram this I clicked on a PCM update I selected the calibration that the shop had wanted me to do or should I say what they're talking about here we're talking about the is it equipped with that crankcase pressure sensor delete kit yes it is boom we hit that button it says there's no updates available 
So I'm thinking, what else could I do here? If you're on a chat here, live chat, go ahead and type it in. What else would you do at this point? Uh, I'm all ears. And, well, I'm thinking maybe I can do a PMI, do a complete PMI on this vehicle, uh, not IDing it by tear tag, but starting a new session of Ford. Actually, I, I, I take that back. <clears throat> Excuse me. I did start this by tear tag. I did enter the tear tag information trying to start a fresh session at IDS, and it didn't make any difference. I could tell that when this thing programmed, it was a very quick program. Like, it didn't actually program it. Usually on Ford IDS, you get the progress bar that goes across and take some time to go across like that. This was a very quick, like, you know, instant configuration, and I knew it didn't program it, it didn't fix it. So what else could we do here? I'm over here thinking, uh, should I throw in a towel? Am I about to quit? Maybe I should file an SIR with NASTIF. Uh, filing an SIR, you may be able to go ahead and get a, uh, a, a what do you call it, um, some help from Ford. Ford service information help or IDS support help is basically non-existent in my opinion. You'll hear other people talk about that as well. But this is an option, file an SIR, but I don't have time for that. I mean, it'd probably be a, a few days to a week before I got a result. So I figure, what else could we do here? In this instance, I figure, let me go ahead and click the uh, no button. Let's program it incorrectly and see what happens. So I go ahead and hit the no button, as you see here. And when I do that, you can see that it says there is a later calibration. And our calibration number goes from that CXH that we originally put into it. And we're going to go to an FUF. So there is definitely a change in the software by that suffix uh, at the end of the calibration number. So I feel confident about this. I go ahead and program this thing, and it's loaded and checked. We're all good, and the codes go away. I did start this vehicle multiple times. I ran it for three or four minutes. One time I keyed it off, started it up. I let it idle in the shop. The shop did state to me that this thing will set the code just idling in the shop. It will actually pop a light just sitting still after about three minutes is what they said. So I'm pretty confident that uh, um, uh, that this is going to be all set here. I don't see any other problems. What do you guys uh, feel about this? Any of those? We got a couple people watching right now. I'm curious, what do you think about this? I think it's an issue on Ford's end. I think the engineers, whoever wrote the program, has the, you know, the yes and no flip-flop, so it's going to the wrong software at the wrong time. I've done this update before on some Ford vehicles. I can't remember exactly which ones with IDS haven't had any problems. I've also done this uh, update specifically on uh, these vehicles with FDRS on the newer Ford. I think it was a 2021 or 2020 Ford Escape possibly. And this update did take care of it. FDRS was uh, no issue. It went right through properly. I think they linked the software on the back end correctly. But on uh, IDS here, 130.04, it is incorrect. So I want to make you guys aware of that. Also, I was curious about what do you know about the uh, software on, uh, well, I got a brain fart that happens sometimes. Pardon me, it's early still. I'm thinking about what happens with the Ford IDS earlier versions because I was on a 130.00, I think, the 130 version of IDS, not the updated version. And the program that I did the day before actually would not start programming. I hit the start programming button. It just aired out. Uh, it didn't even air out. It wouldn't start programming. So that's why I just recently updated 130.04 last week. So you guys let me know if you have any questions. I do appreciate everybody watching. Be sure to check out Hands-On Auto Training on the membership site if you have any questions there. We have a lot of great stuff. If you want to learn more about Ford programming or GM programming and Chrysler programming specifically, I have a lot of other stuff on there, electrical testing. Let me know. Uh, also, once again, next uh, tomorrow, Thursday, we're going to have our premium member meeting, and we're going to be going over some of that NASTIF stuff about certain scan tools getting uh, basically locked out unless you have a credential uh, to type in on your Authy code on your cell phone. So uh, we'll be checking that out. Speaking of, it's 8.05 8 in the morning, and I have to get to work. So I hope everybody has a good day. You guys let me know if you have any questions. Bye-bye.